my short series of videos on construction of small shunting layouts. We're using Grove Street Yard here, my little exhibition layout as an example. And uh, in this part of the video set, we're going to have a look at the scrap yard because it's something that always gets brought up um, at exhibitions, when people ask questions. People really like this bit. With hindsight, I kind of wish I built the whole thing as a scrap yard, but it's by the by. Um, but we're going to start having a look at this area. So I'm going to move out the train of wagons that's, that's in there. And uh, what we can see here is it's just um, one small siding uh, with the scrap yard surrounding it. Now, the scrap itself is really just junk, quite literally. It's broken Airfix kits, Tamiya kits, uh, that sort of thing, Parkside Dundas kits. Anything really that I could lay my hands on. But before we even start loading that into the scrapyard, uh, what we started out with is quite literally a flat open space. We positioned the buildings and the fence to basically demark the area that we were going to fill. And then the track was actually ballasted in the normal way um, with a bit of the ballast grit uh, PVA mix and just left to set. Um, nothing special about that, but then the rest of the ground cover is a mix of brown household water-based emulsion paint. I think it's got some fancy name like cappuccino haze, but you and I know it as mud brown. And I mixed that up with um, some of the Jarvis scatter materials that you can buy, other brands obviously available from Nog, from Prizer, and countless other brands as well around the world. Um, but that gives you a kind of paste. It feels in a way a little bit like masonry paint, and I suspect that if you can get a hold of masonry paint in the right colour, that would also make a perfectly good alternative. And you just sort of spoon it on, quite thick, and just slap it around, um, a bit like uh, putting a chocolate layer on the top of a cake when you're baking. Um, I've, at this stage I've buried some little bits of wood, various scrap pieces of balsa in, just to give a suggestion of texture to the ground surface. And then whilst that was still drying, we actually sprinkled um, some sand on, some very, very fine sand in different colours. Um, there's a lot of white sand, uh, brown sand, and even black sand. Just sprinkle it on randomly, and that sticks into this muck and gives it a surface texture and a slight hint of different colours. Um, this method is actually also good for doing any kind of muddy, uh, churned over area. Obviously later on you can create a suggestion of dampness by putting a little dab of gloss varnish in there. And then we started the fun bit proper of putting the scrap in. Uh, we started off with some of the bigger pieces, so things like this Airfix pug kit. It was all built up, all coloured weathered, and then it was just glued into the muck. Um, you can add lashings of PVA in, and whilst the, the mud layer is still wet, that will all kind of bond together. We've got our Airfix um, RAF emergency crash set kit, uh, distressed and weathered, dumped in there. The ambulance, um, I took all of the top off it and turned it upside down because the underside is actually pretty nicely detailed. Uh, and then we got some large chunks of plastrucked off cuts. Um, another Airfix, the base of a pressed wind silo wagon. Um, and we started breaking down the superstructure off some Airfix. Uh, battleship kits. These had been left over from when I was much, much younger. I used to enjoy making and painting these things. And um, because the kits were fully made up and painted before they were broken down for the bits, you got a lovely mix of different colours. And that's something that real scrap has. It's not just one colour of rust. It's actually a lot of different colours. of so the original colours that these pieces of metal were painted in before they ended up in the scrapyard. Uh, and that helps to make the clusters of scrap look a lot more organic and realistic. And we just kept building them up and building them up. And as the bottom layer dried, we'd then build more on top using uh, polystyrene cement. We've got the brake gear of Parkside Dundas uh, wagon kits that I'd tried building in the past. Pieces of sprue, there's a Tamiya leopard tank kit in there. It's not even the right scale and that's something to bear in mind. Is that when you break down some of these kits, it's not even important that they were for double O scale or whatever scale it is that you're building. All you're wanting is the interesting looking bits. So things like funnels off uh, Airfix warship kits, um, they become things that look like ventilation trunking. Uh, the tank wheels look like uh, parts out of conveyor belts. 
Um, it, even things like rudders off warships can just look like flat pieces of plate steel. And then once it's all glued in, we then go over with a light wash of rust colour with a little bit of silver in, and that gives the suggestion of bits of bare metal from the silver, but also rust from the, the oranges and browns, and that mutes all the colours down together. And we can add in bits of grass and uh, other detritus as well, and just generally just keep building it up. Um, it wasn't all done in one day. Uh, we tried to to do it over several weeks, actually, just a bit here and a bit there. And that helps add to the organic look. Because if you try and put too much down at the same time, it tends to uh, kind of uh, acquire a, a slight order to it, which doesn't look natural. Real scrap is just literally thrown there. But I hope that gives you a little insight into the building of this scrapyard area gives you some inspiration for perhaps adding a bit of a scrap area if you are. It's a really good look that you end up with and it's a good way of getting rid of broken bits of kits. So if you've got all those bits available to you, it can be done very, very cheaply. Anyway, uh, keep following our videos. Uh, look through the channel for other videos, both on building the small shunting layout, but as well also uh, looking at some of the uh, building techniques that were used on the larger layout in the shed. Bolton Trinity Road. If you like this video, don't forget to tickle that like button. It really does like it. It's quite erogenous. And don't forget to share this video as well if uh, you think there's other people who really need to see this. And uh, keep tuned because we're going to be uh, dropping a few more videos into this channel. But until now, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying take very good care of yourself and I'll be back next time.